Hello friends, I am Dr. Amit Ahuja, Assistant Professor, University School of Education from Guru Gobind Singh Indraprastha University, Delhi. Today, we will discuss about the need and importance of EVS at primary level. EVS means Environmental Studies. The situation of the contemporary world is not so fine as it is suffering from traffic congestion, <clears throat> uncontrolled air, water pollution, vehicular congestion, unwanted degradation of due to chemicals, non-judicious use of chemicals, insecticides and pesticides sprayed here and there, especially in fields. And ultimately, such activities lead to threatening of activities. And besides this, above all, the population explosion has also caught the world in its grip. Now the thing is that, what should be done? Being as a responsible citizen or being as a responsible member of a responsible society? See, the efforts should be synchronized since very beginning. It requires a true awareness on the part of the child since beginning that is in his her childhood before the we incorporate all these aspects in an innocent child first of all we as teachers must understand what is meant by the term environment what does it connote what how how does it stand environment forms an important aspect of learning because we survive in an environment it may be biological, it may be physical, it may be social. Environment naturally attracts children because children are curious by nature. And if an environment does not attract children, then definitely it cannot lead to learning on their part and hence ultimately survival for them. Children interact with environment continuously because as per postulates laid by Piaget's theory of cognitive development, Interaction with environment on the part of children is very necessary so that cognitive development may take place. Another, besides this interaction, they explore the environment also by, by virtue of curiosity or inquisitiveness on their part. And during this exploration, they experience the kind of environment, what kind of it is. Then after that, humans depend on environment for existence and continuation of life in the sense that one cannot exist, survive, respire, breathe without an environment, definitely it's a fact. And to maintain the continuity of life on the part of organisms, I should say, rather than humans that comprise microorganisms also, environment is mandatory. So, we are discussing the worthiness or the relevance of the environmental studies by emphasizing upon what does environment mean and how does it stand significant for a child. Because child is a future citizen of a nation and a responsible member of the society. So, we must connote the term properly to him or her. Humans shape the environment and are being shaped by the environment. Yes, humans shape the environment by virtue of their acts, deeds, actions, and in turn, since action is equal and opposite to reaction, as per Newton's third law, they are also being shaped by the environment. Yes, it is. Whatever you sow, so shall you reap, is definitely applicable in this context. Further, when we interact, when we get, when we explore, an environment, then it requires a sense of moral responsibility on our part also, so that environment is protected and environment is conserved. The term protection of environment and conservation of environment are ultimately concerned with protective domains of learning in the sense that they are focusing upon the protection of artificial man-made as well as natural resources. Then, we explore the nature of environmental studies 
first of all it must be realized that it's a multidisciplinary in nature it's not a subject it's not a domain of subject but it's a way of learning it's a process of learning it's a path that leads to learning that's why it comprises the domains from physical sciences that in turn further comprise physics chemistry biological sciences that comprise botany zoology ecology etc and social sciences that further comprise geography atmospheric sciences etc so it's a blend of these major two discipline that is sciences and social sciences that together comprise the evs environmental studies then evs is teaching the children about natural environment the environment in which they survive they respire they live so that in the long run they may care this environment they may have a concern for this environment they may have an awareness of this environment and they may develop and use this knowledge of the environment in future also so that a sense of belongingness develops among them that they are an inseparable part of that environment they themselves don't exist in isolation nor environment is independent of them in the sense that environment depends upon the survival then need of evs at primary level reflects upon some aspects let us discuss them one by one first of all there is a mandatory aspect that requires that the children must be trained to locate and comprehend the relationship between the natural social and cultural environment see environment doesn't exist in isolation as i've said earlier it comprises three major aspects natural social cultural the natural environment comprises biotic and abiotic components the biotic components means uh, humans plants microorganisms the non biotic component or the abiotic component of the environment comprise soil air water rocks mountains etc the social environment comprises the family peer neighborhood school of the child the cultural environment comprises the traditions norms rituals values that are being practiced in that society so you see the child cannot escape from any kind of these environment because ultimately man is a social animal so we must as a teacher consider this aspect in the sense that the child should locate himself herself in this environment and must develop a sense that there is a relationship between him and her and that environment another aspect is that to develop an understanding among the children that must be based on observation and illustration which are drawn from lived experiences yes they should not be rote oriented they should not be retrieved from here or there they should not have been caught from here or there but they should have been based on experiences what is the experience of a child living in a rural area is definitely different from the experience of a child who is a resident of some urban area so they may have different perception about an environment but we should not ignore them we should acknowledge both of them or one should not be acknowledged at the cost of another be just because of some majority factors or quantity another aspect that requires developing an understanding based on observation illustration is that it must be drawn from physical biological social and cultural aspects of life so that it is reflected that the things are in continuum things are cyclic that is nothing is linear that is a definite end and definite beginning no it's cyclic it's going on and the things are dependent upon each other another is that as per piaget interaction with the environment of the child is very necessary how do we act react 
and interact with the environment. That is to develop cognitive capacity and resourcefulness to make the child curious about social phenomena. It's okay that the child is curious by nature, but sometimes that natural curiosity may not come as an end required. So environment must be stimulating enough, challenging enough, interesting enough, so that that natural tendency, that is curiosity, comes into, comes into action. Another is that to nurture the curiosity and creativity of the child in relation to natural environment. Yes, it should not be diverted by this way or that way so to some another aspect. It should have been gold at natural environment so that that natural environment is preserved and conserved and a healthy life comes into action. Another aspect of the need of EVS at primary level is that to develop an awareness among children about environmental issues. As I have discussed with you friends earlier that today we are caught in the web of pollution, population, chemical hazards, nuclear explosions, natural calamities, etc. So an awareness among children must be developed so that the negative effects of these hazards are reduced. Another is that to engage the children in exploratory and hands-on activities to acquire basic cognitive and psychomotor skills through observation, classification, inference, etc. We see that environmental study comprises a major domain of sciences also. So these aspects like observation, classification, inference, etc. focus upon the process approach of the sciences rather than the product that is they all require the person that is a child in our case to explore the environment and hence when they explore that exploration must be based on their hands on activities it should not have been taught to them that is they should not have been provided ready made answer they should have been motivated to explore investigate so that their basic cognitive and psychomotor skills are developed timely because sometimes cognitive apparatus is well developed because of chronological factors but and, but on other side there is not so proper or i should say lack of proper interaction with the environment is not there hence the optimum cognitive growth does not take place another thing is that evs familiarizes the children with the surroundings as it enables them to probe their relationship with nature yes sometimes environment or the surroundings may be so complex so the child may not be able to dwell deep into it so in that case evs as a way of learning familiarizes the child with them that it belongs to them however not at an immediate level but sometimes in future also so by their exposure through media also they can be motivated to think about them that whatever the sometimes can they may say the same situation in future also another thing is that developing a positive citizenship behavior ultimately education enables a person to contribute towards the welfare of the society by being a responsible citizen so all these things require a proper positive citizenship behavior also in such a manner, it should be in such a manner that it leads to the conservation and protection of environment that I have discussed earlier also, but it should be the main goal of EVS now. That is the proper citizenship behavior in positive terms must be used towards the conservation of environment. Then need of EVS at primary level talking in terms of goals must be to improve the quality of environment. For example, nowadays we are caught with smoke that is leading to health hazard for citizens. So the children should be well educated, should be made aware of the efforts on their part in maintaining or improving the quality of environment that even a single step taken by them at their end matters for the quality of the environment. Another thing is that 
the children must be sensitized about the environment and related concerns and problems. That population explosion that is taking place can be controlled, minimized if in future they follow proper family norms. Pollution can be controlled in future also if they avoid unnecessary use of vehicles. Similarly, nuclear radiation or other electromagnetic radiations can be minimized if they use less electronic devices, etc. Another thing is that to develop an insight among the young citizens by motivating them to access the environmental issues from local to global contacts. We are living in a global world. Things have become global. Nothing is local nowadays. So that if I do something here wrong, then it is permeated into my vicinity in a global sense. So that spirit must be developed among them. Then, importance of EVS at primary level, why it should be taught as a way that means to learning. First of all, it focuses on finding solutions to the existing real environmental problems and issues like population explosion, deforestation, pollution, waste disposal, extinction of animal and plant species, etc. All these negative aspects have taken in their grip us. So there is a daring need that we must find solutions to solve these problems. Then, the children must have a concern for the issues pertaining to local, regional, national, international perspective. For example, pollution is a kind of evil that has taken into local, regional, national, international domains all over the world. Similarly, other aspects also. So, the child should see the things as a whole rather than as a part. Another. EVS aims at developing a holistic or integrative perspective of the environment than where child lives in. Yes, like there is a harmonious development of the personality, so environment must be perceived as a whole, not in exclusion, not in watertight compartments. Okay, this is the part I am working here to improve this, on other I should not focus. No, if I am trying my best to improve this aspect of environment, definitely it will impact another aspect of environment also. Then, EVS enables children to explore, understand, appreciate and value the environment. Yes. For example, after teaching the structure of flower to a 6th class or 7th class student in a class that this is gynecium, andresium, calyx coral, etc. When the children rush during their recess, and when they play with each other, they pluck the flowers and throw at each other. Now the simple question is that, where that teaching has gone, where the child was taught that flower is a living structure? If the flower is a living structure, the child could not dare to pluck this and throw at each other. So that means some value laden component is lacking on our part also. When we teach the things in class, that is learning must flow outward from class to the outside world. That requires the children need to explore that they are a part of the environment. How can they push their best efforts to conserve this? They must understand its value. That is to what degree it is important for them. And they must appreciate that they are a part of that environment and they are contributing their best to improve this. Environment is giving the opportunity to survive, then what in turn they are giving the environment to continue? That's a question. Second, EVS helps children in deriving meaning and joy of learning through connecting with their immediate environment that may be natural world and the community. Yes, joyful learning can be promoted when children learn the things with meanings. Just like the example of plucking of flower that I shared with you recently the children could not derive the meaning of being alive. When the teacher taught that flower is a living structure, they could not deduce what does it mean by living on the part of a plant because they always perceive that living means some, some animal. 
that may be human or non-human. Plants, do they respire? Are they living, etc.? If such components are living, only then the child could dare to pluck the flower. So such kind of meaningfulness should be incorporated in our teaching while teaching concepts to the students. EVS at primary level helps children to develop their own insights into the functioning of several things in their environment. Yes, dear friends, definitely when a child thinks his or position in the environment and after some time, after exploration and interaction with the environment, reflects how he or she is going to impact the environment, then gradually over a period of time, an insight develops within him or her. And then he or she realizes that environment is a functioning of several things. That several things may be living, non-living, man-made, artificial, etc. So we come to know that environment is a complex web. It's not a linear structure. It's a complex web in which all depend upon each other. So why should not all contribute about the welfare of each other? If they contribute about the welfare of others, definitely it will lead to their own welfare. So that sense must be inculcated among the future citizens of India. Then, real life experiences and situation must be reflected in the content. That it, it should not be theoretical. It should not be conceptual. That requires retrieval of the concept or content in the examination and scoring by this way or that way. How do they feel about the environment? What is environment for them? Etc. Such thought-provoking questioning or the content should be there. As they play a crucial role in developing and fostering among them a lifelong attitude. That is, they have a lifelong responsibility to preserve and conserve this environment. Moreover, not only they have, they should motivate others also to do so. They must develop values and conviction of action and behaviors towards environment and its conservation. Yes. Value. Value means what is sought. Simply, is stand, stand for the values. Unnecessary noise pollution, honking. Speaking loudly, shouting, playing music at public places, etc., are simple, simply the things that are prevalent all around the world. Then, can't we minimize this? Should we not overcome unnecessary rituals to control this noise pollution, etc., are the things that pertain to values. Conviction of action and behavior means that is how our action and behavior leading to environment and leading to conservation of the environment. Then, EVS at primary level aims to foster a reasoned and sensitive concern for the quality of the environment and for the management of their natural resources. Yes, that is a concern that is reason based, that has not been accepted by some dogma, by some order or as prescribed by some authority. No, it's a reason based that why should we do so? Why should we conserve our environment? Why should we avoid unnecessary crackers during festivals so that it may not lead to smoke, etc. Such reason concern based on our experiences should be there. And ultimately, these reasoned concern lead to a development of sensitivity on the part of learners also. And all these when taken together improve the quality of the environment and ultimately lead to the management of the natural resources. Then EVS at primary level aims at the exposure of the child to real life world. That is, the environment is not confined within classroom. Environment is not confined within school, but it's beyond school and of course comprises the school also. That is school plus society. School plus society plus city up to entire universe comprises environment. So they must have an exposure to real life world and its problem also so that 
they develop a sense of protection and conservation of the environment. Then EVS at primary level also aims at enabling the children to analyze, evaluate and draw inferences about the problems and concerns related to environment. It does not mean that if any problem pertain to some other, another country, another continent, another city, another state, then we have nothing to do with it. No, we should have a concern with that, that if it in coming time attacks us, how can we get rid of that? So that children should be offered a position where they analyze, assess, evaluate and ultimately draw inferences, draw conclusions about the problems regarding its control, prevention, cure and ultimately develop a concern in future also. Then EVS at primary level helps the children in understanding environmental issues. Definitely, first of all, they must comprehend a problem what it is. How does it stand? How can we overcome that? So when such thought-provoking questions are there, then the children at least begin to think. See, doubting is a step towards learning. Doubting leads to thinking. So they must also doubt at least in the situation that do they have any role or have they done something wrong in contributing to that negative environment or the problem that they are facing? If yes, what can be done? If no, what should be done to minimize that? So such situation foster a degree of comprehension among them. Then after that, EVS also aims at promoting positive actions at their end. Okay, it should not be left just at discussion level or a level of deliberation, some, some deeds in behavior should be there. Like if there is deforestation, then there must be plantation. If there is smoke, then we should avoid cracker or burning of unnecessary material. If there is noise pollution, then we should avoid noises, shouting, honking, etc. So these are the things which should be developed among them. That is, it leads to a positive actions at their end. Then after that, there is a daring need to emphasize upon the fact that man is an inseparable part of an environment. Man cannot live without environment. And the child as a miniature adult who is going to be a future citizen must realize, must be facilitated to realize since very beginning. Education plays a very important role in this regard and the primary level is the very beginning level of the education of the child. So by incorporating a way of learning through EVS, environmental studies, children can be motivated to think about an environment, their role in the protection and conservation of their environment and hence its ultimate improvement. Thank you very much.